and welcome back to my vlog. So um, I haven't posted about my health for a while and there's been kind of multiple reasons for it, but I have posted some other content on this vlog, which you may or may not have enjoyed. Um, but today I want to return to the topic of health and give you an update on how I'm doing uh, in 2021 and now that it's been over a year since I've been diagnosed. But also you may notice there's a different background to this uh, vlog and that's because I moved flat. The big update um, I've got for you today is that I have gone on a biologic drug, um, also known as an anti-TNF. So uh, this was a big decision and I want to talk you through why I decided to do it, um, how I found actually getting onto the drug using the sort of NHS system, and thirdly, how I'm feeling uh, now that I'm on it and have been on it for uh, three months. Okay, so firstly, why did I decide to do it? So before going on this, I was on anti-inflammatories um, on a daily basis, and I would say uh, like a reasonably high dose uh, for a number of months. And I was also trying out different diets um, that I was hoping would help. And obviously exercise, physio, sleep, stress management, all of those good things that we should be doing anyway. Um, and I guess in the summer I was doing pretty well with just the anti-inflammatory kind of painkillers and I guess just looking after my health uh, in a general sense. However, as the summer has finished and I went into September and October, um, my pain has got worse and the inflammation, um, you know, I'm guessing got worse. And actually when I did exercise, even if it wasn't particularly rigorous, like I would go for a long walk, uh, it would sort of cause a flare up and I would be in pain for a number of days afterwards. Um, and then it got progressively worse, I would say, into October and then November where I was feeling um, like quite intensive pain uh, across more of my spine, uh, more of my body uh, overall, like my neck was really affected, my upper back was affected, uh, etc. So I wasn't enjoying it. Um, and I felt that the usual regime of like treatment and the anti-inflammatories was not helping. Um, and interestingly on the diet point, I having tried a few things and I have to say I haven't tried them incredibly strictly um, and there is a diet video uh, which I will link below if you're interested as to what I've been trying um, and perhaps I haven't tried them for long enough I would do each sort of diet for about a month uh, to the best of my ability um, but I hadn't noticed any major improvements from it yes I wonder if it's a case of how severe your ankylosing spondylitis is and if you've got a sort of pretty severe AS perhaps the diet is not sufficient um, or whether you just need to do it for a very, very long time to give your body like a full cleanse, which again, I didn't do. Um, and thirdly, I think that maybe actually diet should just be used in combination with actual treatment that really manages the inflammation. And this is probably the conclusion that I'm leaning towards the most. So I'm absolutely not knocking the diet and not knocking the importance of anti-inflammatory eating. But I do think that if your pain is unmanaged, that means your inflammation is unmanaged and that there is damage being caused to your joints. So I don't think you can rely on diet alone in that instance. And I think that real treatment should be sought um, so that you can live your life normally. So yeah, having considered sort of all the options and tried uh, different treatments um, that were available to me, I felt that going on a biologic would be the next step. And the key reason I wanted to do it is because I wanted to try it and see how effective it would be. Um, I know that um, you respond to the biologic drugs best uh, when you're uh, not young, but when your disease is kind of in the early stages. So before there's lots of damage that's already done. And I felt like if I was going to try this relatively serious drug, now would be a time to try it um, when I've still got everything to preserve in my spine. And, um, you know, I'm really active and I'm relatively young and I wanted to kind of live my life to the full. Um, and then if it didn't work, fine, then I could go back to thinking about what else I could do. So a big believer in the fact that chronic pain causes genuine emotional um, kind of has an emotional impact, causes emotional burden and can lead to potentially if it's unmanaged for a long time, you know, mental health challenges where you're feeling demotivated, maybe a little bit depressed. Um, and kind of just not your best in general and therefore can impact other areas of your life so um, I'm definitely not one for enduring pain for the sake of it over a very long period of time and I think that if you've got pain in your body it needs to be treated uh, so that you can be your best self. 
So I've also looked at the potential side effects of going on an anti-TNF. Um, and uh, for me, I felt that the potential side effects, which a lot of people don't get, um, were manageable and um, worth actually giving it a go for the you know incredible benefits that you can get from being on this drug. So I decided to do it, but it wasn't so simple. I faced quite a lot of challenges um, with the kind of health, um, I guess, process or system that we've got at the moment. And I honestly believe that is because the drug is really expensive. So if you live in America, you know, you have to pay for it yourself. And that makes it unaffordable for a lot of individuals suffering from inflammatory arthritis. But actually, if you live in the UK, you can get it on the NHS, which is a real blessing. And it's fantastic. But you need to really justify why you need the drug. I think what's particularly challenging is justifying that you need it as a young female who maybe hasn't got the most severe form of the condition. But I also think if you are in that position, um, then you actually also have the most to gain from the drug. So it's kind of a slightly conflicted situation where, you know, I think generally medical professionals will try and put you off uh, going on the drug at this point because you're not sort of completely desperate. Um, but yeah, I just think it's absolutely crucial that you fight your case if you feel like your condition is being unmanaged and it's impacting your uh, kind of well-being uh, or your physical ability to exercise uh, and just enjoy your life pain-free. I'd be interested to hear if any of your biologics, what your experiences have been on, on getting on the biologics. And the reason I mentioned it may be more challenging if you're a female is because um, the disease progresses slightly differently in females and it doesn't show up so much on sort of x-rays and radiological scans. So um, doctors are potentially a bit more reluctant to give it to you. Um, and there are other medical signs that just appear differently because historically this has been a male disease. So yeah, let me know if you're a young female, if you've, if you've tried to get on the biologics and you struggle with that, I'd be kind of keen to hear your experience. All in all, it's taken me a few months of being incredibly uh, resilient and uh, very good at negotiating to get myself onto this medication and to prove, I suppose, that I needed it um, and to kind of get all the medical results in time. But having said this, uh, since I've been on the medication, I honestly say that it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, so initially, it takes a little while for the medication to kick in um, because it sort of builds up antibodies in your, uh, in your system over time. So it's not a painkiller, which means that the first time you inject yourself, you know, you're kind of cured um, or like in the next 24 hours. But actually over time, once you've done it, uh, let's say two or three times, maybe four times, and you inject yourself every two weeks if you're on the same drug as me, which is Humira or a biosimilar Humira. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just been absolutely phenomenal. Very slowly, I've forgotten that I actually have a condition. Um, I've been feeling very minimal pain in my back, uh, across all areas of my back. Um, I've been able to exercise absolutely normally, um, pretty much across all things I want to do. I haven't like been running marathons or anything. Uh, but if I go for a run, I feel absolutely fine the next day. And honestly, I have not been able to do that for a year. Um, so to be able to do that and to feel good about myself and my body is incredibly uplifting and something that I want you all to be able to do. And I have no morning stiffness. So when I wake up, I don't feel the usual kind of you know, when it takes you a while to get moving and you wake up and you're aware that your back is hurting or your neck is hurting or something else is hurting and that kind of continuous feeling. I think very occasionally I have a little bit of tenderness in my lower back, um, particularly if I've been either sitting down all day or maybe doing really rigorous exercise so I hadn't like balanced it really well. I really feel fantastic. And for any side effects, which I think uh, a lot of people are worried about. So it has only been three months, but so far I've not noticed any major side effects. Uh, at all. Um, I think maybe I've been a bit more sensitive to like colds. So I um, had a bit of a, you know, like maybe a blocked nose, um, sneezing a little bit more, but that's it. No like temperature or major flu or anything, no COVID. Be glad to know. And the other benefit of this medication is that if you're on it, you, I think you're eligible for a vaccine. So <laughs> many, many reasons to get on it if you need it. The idea of injecting yourself with something on a regular basis potentially for the rest of your life seems like a big deal, but actually it's not. And it's very easy to get used to it, even if you do have a fear of needles. Um, and I had a very supportive group who kind of encouraged me through it. Um, and who were like living examples of how effective this drug is and how tailored it is to 
arthritis. I can imagine that some of you will have questions around the practicalities of injecting yourself and how I'm finding that. Uh, so I'm going to do a separate vlog uh, on that. Let me know if you have any other questions in relation to actually being on it. But I wanted to say on the positive and particularly for females suffering with AS. Um, so I didn't have raised CRP or ESR markers, which are the inflammatory markers um, for some people who've got uh, inflammatory arthritis but not for all people. And certainly if you don't have them raised, it does not mean that your arthritis isn't severe um, or that it's managed well. And that was a barrier to getting treatment because often they say people don't respond as well if that's the case. They also say females don't respond as well. Thirdly, if you haven't got a huge amount of like radiographic progression, they might say, you know, you don't need this. All of that is not entirely true because I'm a living proof of somebody who um, hasn't got CRP markers raised, uh, is a female um, and is directly benefiting from the drug um, in the most like wonderful way. Um, so I think that yeah, if you feel like your conditions are managed, do not give up and push back um, on some of these potential uh, barriers. So yeah, that's my experience so far. I'll let you know how I get on and wishing you all the best with your health journeys.